It's a beautiful day at a restaurant. In front of the place, a sign about the book What's Cooking Pittsburgh is posted. Winona, who wrote the book, is the restaurant's chef and has a customer over for lunch. He doesn't seem to believe much in the new stroganoff dish she created. But the chef is very convincing and manages to convince him that the kitchen's creativity is good. She promises that if he doesn't like the food, she will return the money. The customer accepts, and Winona, satisfied, goes to the kitchen, where her team is present. She asks how her new recipe is going, and Pearl, her helper, says it isn't going so well. Winona tastes it and says it really didn't taste good, which is frustrating since she wanted something different in her new cookbook. The phone rings, and Pearl leaves Winona trying to fix the recipe to answer it. As soon as she asks who is speaking, her eyes widen, and she is taken aback. Pearl runs to call the chef, who, so focused on her culinary creation, doesn't give the helper room to speak. But Pearl doesn't give up, she soon interrupts and says that Sonia Goldberg called. Winona stops talking instantly. Her shock leaves no room for reaction. The chef walks over to the phone, agitated. Sonia says they've been watching Winona's success in the book and on social media. She says the obvious next step was television. The chef from the Hungry Network has retired, and they would like her to audition for the show. Winona could hardly believe it. She accepts, delighted. The chef goes to the tables in the restaurant and finds the customer from before. Happy, she asks how the dish was. He says it was much better than he expected. Winona smiles. Pearl appears and asks how the meeting went. Winona tells her about the proposal and makes her scream with happiness. In another scene, two people get out of the car. They were carrying a load of food to the kitchen, and when they put it on the counter, Adam wondered if the groceries would be enough to serve at the event. He is worried that he had already run out of food at a previous edition of Flora Fest, an event in the city, and didn't want that to happen again. Millie reassures him that everything will work out. Katrina, Adam's daughter, arrives in the kitchen and greets everyone. Adam makes her promise that she would not study in the preparations for the festival but would help them, and the young woman promises. Millie sneezes, Adam looks at her worriedly, but the woman assures her it's nothing. At the restaurant, Winona says that Annie, an older woman in a portrait who seems to mean a lot to her, has always dreamed of being on a television show. Pearl smiles, and the chef offers the assistant a chance to go on a road trip with her to New York. Pearl's expression withers. She had an appointment with her boyfriend. Then, she tries to persuade Winona to make the trip alone. It would be good for her to take some time off to rest and meet people since she is alone. Winona argues that she doesn't have time to meet someone, her life is cooking. Later, when alone and making coffee, she looks at Annie's portrait and asks what the older woman thought of it. The decision was made. Tidy and packed, she pulls the cover off a vintage and seemingly fancy convertible car. The chef takes the lead. The road trip was about to begin. The wind in her hair, the road in her eyes, everything so beautiful, and. The car starts making strange noises and stops moving. Winona takes a deep breath. What was happening? She was in the middle of nowhere. There wasn't much choice but to get out of the car, and that's what she does. The chef starts walking down the road, irritated with Pearl for convincing her to drive to New York. Her hopes were fading when she saw a man on a tractor and ran out to get him. She tells him that the car broke down, he doesn't say anything. She asks if there's a mechanic, and he still doesn't say anything. Anyway, tired Winona asks if there is a town nearby. The farmer agrees to take her. The two arrive in town, and she gets off the tractor, grateful. Adam is on the other side of the tractor, and when Joe leaves, Adam and Winona come face to face. Both look surprised to see each other and shake hands, uncomfortable. He asks if he can help her and says her shirt is stained. Winona doesn't accept his help and walks away. At the mechanic, Winona discovers that the car needs a lot of parts to run. Winona asks how long the mechanic, Dora, would be able to fix the car. She says it would be in a few weeks because Flora Fest was coming up and the whole town stopped as it was a community gathering that everyone valued. The chef panics. She needed to be in New York on Monday, and she couldn't leave the car behind because it was given to her by someone very important. Dora is moved and asks the woman not to take any hasty action. She would reassess everything in the morning and make a few phone calls. In the meantime, Winona could stay at the inn and rest. She looked like someone who needed a break. The chef relents and does what the mechanics recommend. At the inn, she is surprised when Adam shows up. The two greet each other. Winona is concerned that there is no cell phone reception, but she follows Adam when he leads her to the room where she will be staying. Upon seeing the clean and tidy place, Adam notices that she was surprised. A little embarrassed, she says she just expected a different place. Adam doesn't seem convinced and treats her a little rudely when giving her instructions on how the inn works. Before leaving, the man makes a point of remembering that her clothes were dirty. Winona then goes down to the garden and tries to find a cell signal. She lands, finally, near the statue of a bust of a woman. Eagerly, she calls Sonia's office and explains that she has car trouble, but the operator is not sympathetic to her case. He warns that if she is not in the city by Monday, she will lose her chance. Winona is upset and goes back to the inn. She calls over Adam, who seems busy, and asks if the kitchen is open. Apparently there isn't much food at the inn, and she asks to see the kitchen. Dora calls Adam to talk and says that Millie is sick. 
Adam says he'll find a way to make the food without her. Dora doesn't believe it, but he assures her that the two just needed a plan. While they are thinking, Dora asks what is the good smell coming from in the kitchen, and, when the two walk towards the room, they find Winona cooking. Embarrassed, she apologizes and admits she can't control herself in the kitchen. Although Adam didn't like the attitude very much, Dora says it was fine with her, the smell was wonderful. The mechanic asks if she is a chef, to which Winona replies yes. Dora tells Adam that she has an idea. As Winona does the dishes, they ask her to help return the profit to the community, but she says she can't. She doesn't plan to stay. Dora says she would work on the car for free. Adam is against the idea, he says that the fest is made by people from the community, and has always been like that. Dora asks if he has a better idea. Adam takes a deep breath. Winona considers the proposal, while Dora falls in love with her cooking. The fact that Dora works on the car for free and has it ready for Winona to arrive in New York convinces her. She would help. The next day, she tells Sonia's attendant that she will be in NY on Monday. Adam and Winona arrive in the kitchen, and Adam makes introductions. Harry, a young man from the town, and Katrina would help. Winona gave a shocked laugh. Just the four of them to serve over a hundred people. She doesn't like the idea at first, but soon conforms. She had been through worse. Like a general, the woman looks at the supplies and starts giving orders to everyone. As they cook, Katrina asks Harry to cover her quickly and runs to the mailbox to get some mail, which she hides. In the kitchen, Winona tastes one of the potatoes Harry makes and says it's perfect and he couldn't do better. Harry is pleased and surprised, a little proud of himself. Winona realizes that he has made a mess, and Adam suggests that Katrina accompany him upstairs and lend him one of his shirts. The two watch the young people climb the stairs. Winona tries to talk Adam out of being a little bold with the taste of potatoes, but he says it's best to stick with the basics. Winona is a little frustrated that he has no sense of adventure, but she doesn't press the issue any further. Harry is putting on Adam's shirt, and, meanwhile, Katrini is looking at the letter that she had previously hidden. The girl is thoughtful. As soon as Harry comes out of the closet, she asks if she could tell him a secret. She applied to college early, and this was her admission letter to Mitt. She was afraid to open. Harry convinces her that it would be best if she opened it. Katrina takes a deep breath and opens the letter. She got in. Winona, downstairs, is making Adam taste a recipe, which he actually likes. He asks why she doesn't have a restaurant with a Michelin star, and she says that her desire is to make affordable food. It's cooking for real people. Food connects you with people. The two understand each other. That trace of animosity between them disappears. Interrupting, Katrina and Harry enter the kitchen. She asks the two of them to taste the sauce she made. Harry says it's out of ketchup. Winona smiles and compliments him on his insight. Later, Adam is making some pastry, and Winona starts giving tips on how to make it. They put their hands together as she taught him the movement. Adam is a little distracted, but he continues to do it. Then, he asks if he managed to get the stains out of her clothes from before. She says she is very exhausted, and he says he will clean it. It was the least he could do. Harry, pasting the day's produce into the food storage cupboard in the garden, asks when Katrina is going to tell her father that she's been accepted to Mitt. Katrina doesn't seem comfortable. She admits that she didn't tell her father that she applied to college early, which surprises Harry. She explains that she was afraid of breaking his heart, as it was just the two of them and he would be alone. Harry smirks. What if her father dated? Katrina looks at him in disbelief, not knowing who the person he would date would be. Harry just looks at her, and Katrina understands. Winona. The problem was that the chef would leave. Harry smiles more. What if she wasn't? Distracted and agitated by the thought, they leave and do not close the storeroom. At the mechanic, Dora promises Winona that the car will be ready in time. The chef takes the opportunity to praise Harry's culinary skills, leaving the mechanic surprised. According to her, he couldn't even fry an egg. Winona is curious about how much the woman knew about Harry. A fact that elicits a giggle from Dora. Of course she knew, he was her son. Changing the subject, the mechanic asks how Adam is, and Winona says he's fine but she just wanted him to be more flexible with the menu. Dora laughs. She says that she will find no one who fights as hard for this town as Adam. Flora Fest is difficult to organize, mainly because there are few tourists, but he made it happen. Adam has his heart in the right place. At her usual spot to get a signal, Winona gets a voicemail from Sonia asking if she's having a festival. The chef confirms it. When the message is over, she turns to the bust of the woman, the statue, and, in a loud voice, asks her what she thinks she wanted. The audition would only be on Monday. Adam appears, catching her talking to herself, and asks if everything is okay. Winona, embarrassed, says she was just chatting with her friend and points to the statue. Adam looks at the statue with a half-smile and asks if the chef knows who it is. The woman in the statue was the mayor's wife, who had moved to New Holland when she married him. But she was terribly homesick, especially when the tulips were in bloom. So the mayor traveled all over the country collecting tulips and planted them in the summer garden at his home. It was a romantic act, Winona said. Adam goes on to say that every year she called people to see the tulips in bloom. Over time, the crowd grew, giving rise to Flora Fest. Adam smiles and looks tenderly at Winona. For some, it might be a silly festival, but it was part of New Holland's history. Adam makes a decision there and says he will introduce her to yet another New Holland secret. 
Later, the two are eating pizza on the porch of the inn. Winona says it was delicious. Adam then asks what she had in New York, and Winona explains about the Hungry Network, which leaves Adam impressed. The chef is excited, saying that if she gets the job, she will be connected to millions of Americans. He admits that before he wasn't thrilled with the idea of bringing her into the catering organization, but now he was happy that he had done it. The two smile at each other. Winona asks how he got the inn, and he says it was his wife's inheritance, but she died in childbirth. She was laborious and costly, but he couldn't part with her. Something like keeping the memory alive. In the morning, Adam is having coffee and goes out into the garden. That's when he looks to the side. He stops drinking his coffee and runs off to wake Winona, saying they were in trouble. The two go downstairs and find a pile of food scattered on the floor. The raccoons had entered the warehouse and destroyed everything. The two go inside the house, where they find Katrina and Harry, and tell them what happened. Katrina, guilty, admits it was her. She had been the last one to put the food there. Harry intervenes, saying it was both their fault, as he was with her. Adam says it's okay, that sort of thing happened, but now he doesn't have the budget for the buffet anymore. Winona tries to lighten the mood, making it clear that she has been through any and all types of culinary incidents, and that if they wanted to fix it, she could. Adam looks at her, inspired. She was right. They would figure it out. They would call people and ask for donations. They could count on the community in difficult times. Excited, the four start calling everyone. Although there was a lot of contribution, it was not enough. Winona remembers Joe, the farmer, and proposes the idea of talking to him. Katrina says that Sonia is on the phone. The producer asks Winona what she thinks about sending a camera crew to accompany her to the festival. Winona says she would love it. At Joel's house, Adam and she come to the conclusion that they will need to change the menu for everything to work out. Joel arrives with refreshments, and they start talking to him. They ask if I have anything to give for Flora Fest. Joe, the quiet one who didn't say anything, surprisingly did and promised food. They are happy. Adam invites him to stay at the inn for a week with special treatment, and they ask him to participate in the Flora Fest, which draws a sincere smile from the farmer. Pearl calls Winona and asks when she will be in New York. She sees Adam via video call, asks who he is, and Winona admits that she is in town but will arrive in NY Monday morning. At home, Adam offers Winona a drink. In the other room, Katrina thanks Harry for taking the blame too, and the boy says that friends would stay together. The two arrive in the kitchen and find Winona telling Adam that the coffee he had prepared was very good. Katrina says it was a good thing it was, as it was the only thing people bought there. Winona looks at him thoughtfully and starts writing in her notebook. All four of them stare blankly at her. She finishes and, without giving any consideration to what she was writing, tells everyone to go to bed. They were confused. How do they go to bed if the festival is the next day and they haven't even done anything? Winona asks everyone to trust her. Before leaving, Katrina apologizes to the chef for leaving the warehouse open. Winona smiles, says everyone makes mistakes, but what's important is the ability to get up when you fall. Katrina smiles. Winona was a lot like her father. Later, late at night, Winona tiptoes into the kitchen but is spotted by Adam, who turns on the light. He tells her that he knew she was up to something. Winona tries to cover it up, saying that she wanted to make the dessert, but she only had a vague idea of what it would be because she's never made it before, so it wouldn't be worth keeping everyone awake while she tried it. Adam looks at her fondly and says he will help her. While waiting for the recipe to be ready, Adam asks how she started cooking. Winona says her neighbor trained in cooking in Paris and was like family to her. He taught her everything she knew about cooking. After Winona finished cooking school, the two decided to open Juanes, a cross between Winona and Annie. It was very difficult at first, and unfortunately, when the business started to take off, Annie passed away unexpectedly. They talk about how they felt alone and how they missed having someone. When dessert is ready, Adam offers her a spoonful of candy, but, at the last moment, eats it. Winona lets out an indignant hay and smears cream on his nose. Adam laughs and says two could play that game, and he smears her cheek. The day of the festival has arrived. Everyone is tidying up, there are flowers everywhere. In the kitchen, Winona names the menu and hands out the papers. Alone with her father, Katrina assures him that he could date. Adam says Winona and he had different lives. In the kitchen, Winona smiles at Harry as she sees him cooking and tells him that he has a gift. Harry says, with regret, that he wanted her to stay longer because he had a lot to learn. She could open a one is there. The chef, sad, says that she couldn't, but if he wanted to, he could go to her city. Harry says he wouldn't leave his friends and family. Afterwards, Katrina suggests they take turns and tells her father to take Winona to Flora Fest. The two accept and walk around the place, taking pictures, laughing, and talking to people. She participates in the sack race and dances with Adam. Katrina, then, tells them the TV crew was there. Dora arrives and says the car will be ready in time, and she is filmed taking the first bite as she exclaims how good it is. However, the happy moment is broken by Millie, who is upset that they didn't use her menu. Adam and Winona explain the situation, and Winona is able to soften her heart. Reporters do an interview with Winona, in which she praises the city's community effort and festival. Afterwards, Katrina calls the chef to talk and tells her that she wasn't worried about her, 
and her father being close, but happy. Winona, embarrassed, says that the two were just friends. It wouldn't work, once she would go to New York. Winona asks if there's anything else she'd like to talk about, and Katrina admits to applying to college early. She talks about her fear of telling her father. Winona looks at Katrina and says that her father would not be alone. He had the support of the city. Back at the Flora Fest, Katrina asks to speak with her father. Finally, she shares that she had applied to MIT and explains why. She says that there is a program that allows you to study economic problems and why they happen, and that she would use this to understand the smaller amount of tourists and infrastructure in New Holland so that it does not disappear from the map. Adam asks if she got in, and the girl says yes, plus they offered her a scholarship. Adam is delighted and says that this was amazing. He was very proud of her. That night, Adam tells Winona of his plans to increase visitors to the inn. The two look at the people enjoying their food, and she says that was the best part of being a chef. Adam looks at her and says that he needed to talk to her, but is interrupted by Dora saying that the news has started. The news starts, but something is wrong. They edited it to make it look like New Holland was the sloppy, forgotten community and Winona was the savior of the homeland. They cut out parts of the interview to make it sound like she was bragging about the facts. Everyone looks at her, and Winona tries to explain that she didn't say that. She says they twisted the words, that out of context they sound bad, that she's sorry. Dora, Joe, and Millie leave the room, upset. Winona begs Adam to believe her, but he just says he hopes the job is really important to her, and leaves. Winona packs her bags to leave, not before glancing at the guest book on top of her desk. Then she gets in her car and drives away. Adam, sitting on the porch, reads what Winona wrote to him. She says thanks for New Holland, saying she's unique because of its people. Katrina asks her father where Winona is. He tells her that she left and that it was better that way, since she had made the city look desperate just to promote herself. Katrina said that she had heard the entire interview when she was recording it, and they edited everything. Winona, actually, said it was them that saved the city. Adam admits he was an idiot, and she tells him to go after her to apologize and tell her how he feels. In Sonia's office, Winona calls Pearl. She says she met someone, but the news edit made her look like a horrible person. Now, she was here, and all she could think about was what he thought of her. Pearl tells Winona that she has finally found someone to share all that she has achieved. The chef is shaken, but Sonia appears. She asks if she is ready to audition. In the footage, Winona seems distracted. Sonia tells her to forget the teleprompter and just say what she thought of the food. What cooking meant to her. Winona, then, looks into the camera and starts talking about what Annie had taught her. About how food connected people. She used to think that she just belonged in the kitchen. But nobody wants to be in the kitchen alone, right? Sonia asks her to do the cooking demonstration, but Winona barely hears her. She belonged somewhere beyond the kitchen. The woman leaves the studio and walks the streets of New York, determined, when someone calls out to her. It was Adam. She asks what he was doing there. Adam says he went there to apologize. He asks how the audition went. Winona looks at him and says that even if he connected with millions of people, it wouldn't be real. She wanted a real connection. She wanted to build a new Wannis. In a remote place. She asks if he knows of any inns that need a chef. Adam smiles. He says that although it was funny, he was, but that they could do it anywhere, wherever she wanted. Winona claims she is prepared for this change. Adam says he was too, but he needed to do what he wanted to do last night. Winona says she was listening. Adam puts his hands on her face. And they kiss. Winona asks if he is serious about needing a chef. Adam says yes, and they could discuss the details over dinner. Winona laughs and says that she saw a pizzeria nearby. The two hold hands and walk down the sidewalk, talking happily. It is just the beginning of their story.